Thanks for tuning back in. I'm Tommy Campbell, still bald, still in my basement, and still laughing that the team with the guy doing Pfizer ads won their second straight Super Bowl while the Mike Lindell mustache conspiracy theorist Aaron Rodgers had his season ended seconds into his first game. Ronna Romney McDaniel will be out as RNC chair, and Trump is calling for McDaniel to be replaced by Michael Watley and co-chaired by his daughter-in-law, Laura Trump. I'll be having a laugh getting into Laura Trump's lack of qualifications, her dog charity grift, the RNC's history with dodgy spending, and what this all means. Plus, I mock conservative Super Bowl controversy, get into all the silly, including the upside-down crosses and advertisements, and by popular demand, there is indeed another genuine pay from my special copy of Lauren Boebert's book and more, but first, this. And I think anybody running for president should take an aptitude or a cognitive test. I do. I think it. You want to have people that can pass things. And I took one in office, so I said to Doc Ronnie, do you know Doc Ronnie? Yeah. From Texas, the White House doctor. Doc Ronnie, he's the great doc. He's a doc. Yeah, we know what a doctor is, do you? I wouldn't boast about a test administered by the freewheeling prescriptions doctor that devolved into a cross between Coke's Ray Liotta at the end of Goodfellas and Senator Palpatine. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'd like to see the candidates attempt to make an Ikea desk, okay? At first I said no manual, but you know what? You can use the manual. That's fine. Usher was great, but what I think America really needed for the Super Bowl halftime show was Trump, Biden, and Haley with flat pack Ikea boxes and Allen keys. To make it more relatable, all spouses should be present just pointing and judging. Does that really go there? You're doing it wrong. Ikea can even provide the $1 oddly soft, not even in the same league as Costco hot dog, for the winners to eat and for Trump to furiously throw when he loses. It is pouring MAGA tears. I played in 35 countries for over two decades, but most days you'll find me here. Thanks for taking in this bald comedian's take on things. Please join the best subscribers on YouTube while I blast the latest and stupid and more. I want to wish a happy Valentine's Day to my hot dumb lawyer, my genius model wife. Even I have trouble believing that one. And the gorgeous daughter I wish I could date. This is really cool. Ronna McDaniel, or as she was known before her job, Ronna Romney, yes, she's related to Mitt, and she proudly rolled with her maiden name until she was elected chair of the RNC when, according to the Washington Post, Donald Trump made her use McDaniel. Ronna was on the audio that the Detroit News obtained of Donald Trump pressuring two Wayne County canvassers not to certify Joe Biden's win. The audio has her saying, if you can go home tonight, do not sign it, we will get you attorneys. Ronna McDaniel says she has no plans to leave until after the February 12th South Carolina primary, but Donald Trump is calling for Ronna to be replaced by North Carolina GOP Chairman Michael Watley and the new co-chair to be Laura Trump. Trump posted a press release that noted, The RNC must be a good partner in the presidential election. It must do the work we expect from the National Party and do it flawlessly. Every penny will be used properly. New day. The Republican National Committee is a U.S. political committee that assists the Republican Party. It is responsible for developing and promoting the Republican brand and political platform, as well as assisting in fundraising and election strategy, and is also responsible for organizing and running the Republican National Convention. His daughter-in-law is linked to a dog rescue charity that, according to Internal Revenue Service filings, show that the group has spent as much as $1.8 million on fundraising costs at Mar-a-Lago and Trump's golf course. It's like she looked at her husband's kid's cancer charity and was like, hey, I can grift too. How about animals? I'll do something with them while you go to Africa and shoot some with your big brother. Michael Watley is the general counsel to the RNC, and last year he failed in his bid to become RNC co-chair, even though he had Trump's endorsement. And for those that don't remember, Mike Lindell worked very hard campaigning to be RNC chair. He never got a Trump endorsement, even though he's thrown his entire business away to support Trump, and he suffered a hilariously crushing defeat from Ronna Romney McDaniel, getting just four of the votes. Lindell spent a lot of time boasting about being a numbers guy, claiming he took calculus in the 8th grade, but I'll save him from dusting off the calculator he's only used to count grams and let him know that he received just 
2.38% of the vote. Like every other Trump, Lara would be nowhere without family money and nepotism. For those not aware, she has been releasing cover songs, including Tom Petty's I Won't Back Down, that she sings to Mar-a-Lago diners held hostage to her awful singing. And it is awful. I mean, I've been acting for decades, and I have friends that have starred in West End plays. I have been surrounded by incredibly talented people for years, some of them very famous, some not. And she wouldn't even make a fail highlight audition reel on American Idol. Well, I won't back down. No, I won't back down. You can stand me up at the gates of hell, but I won't back down. And there's more to come. <laughs> Not even close. But back to the RNC spending money. With Rana at the helm, Trump had them spending $300,000 on pallets of Don Jr.'s self-published book and then handed them out to Trump donors so Don Jr. could get on a bestseller list. This is the level of double dipping and corruption that existed when Trump had someone in there that he had trouble with. What's going to happen when he wedges in his son's makeup lab explosion survivor wife? The Kansas City Chiefs won in overtime, Taylor kissed her man on the field, and Biden shared this meme sending MAGA into complete meltdown. Yes, the PSYOP went to plan. And although conservatives claim they were going to boycott the Super Bowl, it was the most watched television event since the moon landing, though they probably protested that too and claimed it was fake. Every time I think of those folks, I think of 72-year-old Buzz Aldrin flattening a conspiracy theorist after being told his accomplishment never happened. Buzz knocking out a moron in his 70s, and you have Mick Jagger dancing and singing for two hours at 80. I get that it would be nice to have the energy we all had at 25, but can we stop discounting wisdom and experience? Nielsen and Adobe Analytics measured the CBS feed with an average of 120 million viewers, Univision 2.2 million viewers, setting a record for the Super Bowl on a Spanish language network, Nickelodeon averaged 1.2 million viewers, and every streaming platform that aired the game set records. Nielsen also reported 202.4 million viewers had tuned in for a minimum of six minutes. Six minutes. For those that watch my recent breakdown of Twitter's totally false video metrics, they require two seconds to be considered a view. Here, we are talking six minutes to rate as a portion of the big game. Well, Christianity under attack all over the globe as we're seeing a crackdown on Catholic churches in Nicaragua. Back here at home, the left has declared open season on people of faith as well. In the culture war last night, Americans witnessed what some are dubbing the satanic Super Bowl, including this moment where someone called Ice Spice, who was hanging out with leftist icon Taylor Swift, made what some call satanic hand gestures while she donned a upside down cross. Okay, Christianity is not under attack, especially when you have $100 million to spare for two Super Bowl ads by the He Gets Us campaign during a game where the big-time players pray on the field and point to the sky after field goals and touchdowns. They aren't trying to draw attention to a cool-looking cloud, another Chinese spy balloon, or someone in the cheap seats. Ooh, look at your seat. That sucks. If Christianity is under attack, it's by Newsmax, since they are doing what they can to go after Taylor Swift a Christian via her friend Ice Spice, a rapper who she has collaborated with. Ooh, Ice Spice has an upside down cross. She must be a monster. In the Catholic tradition, the inverted cross represents the martyrdom of St. Peter and is called the Cross of St. Peter. Her necklace was designed by Alex Moss, who has posts regarding the jewelry on his Instagram and notes that it is indeed the Cross of St. Peter, not a deep state devil worshiping ploy. Like Don Jr., Newsmax is clutching at straws, albeit for different reasons. Thank you. I see every tip from pennies to dollars. They are hugely appreciated and help make this show possible. If you love what I do here and you can afford to help out, throw me a buck with the PayPal link in the pinned comment or drop me a super thanks with this button. And please take two seconds after this video to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. These things are free and help the show grow. Thank you. They also pointed to her top since conspiracy theorists decided that the brand name Balenciaga is a Latin code and that it's actually a satanic child trafficking company when it's just the surname of Cristobal Balenciaga, the founder of the Spanish fashion brand. These are the same people that are fine with Confederate flags and Nazi symbols. But hey, Ice Spice also did this. So everyone that likes just to party and have a good time, no, they're really saluting their devil god. Just like everyone that gives a thumbs up is actually hitchhiking. During the Super Bowl, the guy that uses a key all day and never opens a door, 
thought it would be smart to share this. And it's not just Don Jr.'s blatant racism that's terrifying and depressing, it's that he had so many likes. There are awful people among us, and it's just nuts that they're out there throwing hearts at Don Jr.'s post and then leaving awful comments on posts showing Travis and Taylor kissing on the field. These are sad, scared, and stupid little people. Mike Lindell's network host, Emerald Robinson, tweeted, Your elections are rigged. Your nation is being invaded at its border. An illegal regime forced you to take a deadly shot or lose your job. But you've got time to watch football? Bread and circuses for slaves. RFK Jr. ran an ad that he claimed he had nothing to do with, but he pinned it to his profile, and his own family came out against the frog-throated lunatic again. My cousin's Super Bowl ad used our uncle's faces and my mother's. She would be appalled by his deadly healthcare views. Respect for science, vaccines, and healthcare equity were in her DNA. She strongly supported my healthcare work at one campaign and read, which he opposes. Mark McCloskey, remember the McMansion guarding gun-toting lunatic? Well, he was furious that Lift Every Voice and Sing was performed and said that African Americans should have no benefits because of this song. This isn't a fake tweet. This is real. This is him saying this out loud to the world. These are sad, scared, and stupid little people. Now, I think it's really cool that the viewership was really huge and that more and more people were watching something that they wouldn't normally watch. Advertisers such as Dove aired a commercial for young women on body confidence. I was watching this with my wife and I noted, this is here because of Taylor Swift. I mean, there's a different demographic tuning in and it's great. I invited my friend and his son over to join us, but he was staying in because his daughter, who only got into football this year, was having her friends over for a watch party. It's neat. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I was late to the party with football. I just didn't get it. And then when I did, I found it really interesting. I also like to barbecue, so the sport works well with that. And fun fact, my son is a math whiz, and he learned all his calculations from watching football and adding up the scores. Your thoughts on that now? (laughs) Well, of course, President Trump is the sharpest person to occupy the Oval Office in our lifetimes. And I can say that from intimate experience working in the West Wing every single day of the presidency. His mind is about as sharp as his tiny mushroom. Good luck trying to Shawshank your way through the wall with no plan and an orange jello nub. For those new to the show, I'm glad you found me. Thank you. For a year and a half, I've been reading genuine pages from my special copy of Lauren Boebert's book. This really is a ton of fun. I only do this once a week, and it's been pretty wild. Let's get back to it. Eventually, our redneck space shuttle came to a stop when it careened into the dumpster, sending a tower of styrofoam trash across the parking lot that would have Al Gore reaching for his recycled Kleenex. The thing is, we were the ones crying because we were laughing so hard for a full minute that we could barely mouth breathe. Jason was turning purple and pointing at my cheddar tooth tunnel of fun that was just begging for it. Get some air here, please. We were covered in beers and tears and loving it. For us, this was a real couple's moment. Usually when there's a wild Coors and crying baptism, it involves hosting my husband and his prison buds at the smash pile. So it was nice to have us a little us time. This is one thing I don't like about my evenings with Ted Cruz. I get to enjoy the fancy hotels with doors on the inside, elevators and fridges full of tiny drinks, but he's just so serious. I try and make jokes all the time like, I'm pregnant, or I'm not in the mood. Sometimes I'll just order us some room service, and when there's a big knock, I'll look through the people and say, your wife's at the door. I once saw him just in his cowboy boots attempting to climb out of a window after this. I guess I've always been attracted to his power. I'm not sure how he'll feel when I announce that I want to follow in his footsteps and do politics too. He has no idea that this Colorado wildcat had just hatched a major plan. But I hope he shows me the kind of support I show him when he's curled up in fetal position, calling me his petite oignon. But here I am, stroking Mountain Dew, reflecting on my TED time for a moment. Because this wiggly little hamster reminds me of the senator with stomach so hairy, I call him the Cuban werewolf. I love Donald Trump more than all of my kids put together times a hundred. But I never understood the dog comments about Heidi since being with Ted's like making out with a patch of damp moss. Mountain Dew wasn't damp though. He was dry and I was relieved. I know I've had a lot of run-ins with the laws, but I don't want them to stick their noses in my business and catch a whiff of the beer and book me for having an underage drunk hamster, especially since I am planning to be in the government. 
Well, I think he's underage. When Jason won him in the poker game, he was so happy that he left without seeing if he had any belongings. So without an official ID, it's hard to say how old he is. I took him to one of the vets in the McDonald's parking lots, but he wasn't much help in the matter. I even tried asking one of the psychic phone lines off the television, but when I put the receiver to Mountain Dew's ear, he didn't say a word. So they had nothing to work with, and I just sat there watching my MasterCard bill going up and up. It was like a fairy tale. If you've enjoyed this genuine page from Low Rent Booze Burbs book, let me know in the comments and I'll see about reading another page sometime soon. You're in your basement, just like Biden. Yeah, we patriots are going to listen to you, not. I have eyes, ears, and free thinking. I watched the Putin interview. It was very informative and matched exactly what I've witnessed the past 60 years. Mega tears. Tommy Campbell, dumb lib. Mega tears. Consequences are obvious. Tommy Campbell not only brain damaged himself by watching real journalism with Carlson, but developed an early stage of PTSD. The only thing I can recommend to this guy is to stop fear and threat mongering, especially like Hillary and other similar lunatics, so he can save his health condition. Mega tears. Being coked Ray Liotta at the end of Goodfellas and Senator Palpatine. <laughs> he looks like the Emperor. Uh. I even tried asking one of the psychic phone lines off the television. <laughs> the PSYOP went to plan, and although conservatives claim they were going to bite, 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 bite cat, I love Donald Trump more than all my kids combined, but I never understood the dog comments about Heidi, since being with Ted's like making out with a patch of damp moss. <laughs> Laura Trump, his daughter-in-law, is linked to a dog rescue charity that, according to IRS filings, show that the group has spent nearly $2 million on fundraising costs at fundraising. Fundraising. Exactly. Usually, when there's a wild Coors and crying baptism, it involves hosting my husband in his prison months at the Smash His mind is about as sharp as his tiny mushroom. Good luck trying to shush it. Usually, when there's a wild Coors and crying baptism, it involves hosting my husband and his prison buds at the smash pile. So it was nice to have us a little us time. And notes that it is indeed the cross of St. Peter, not a deep state devil wash, wa wash or purring. Because this wiggly little hamster reminds me of the senator with a stomach so hairy, I call him the Cuban werewolf. Ow! Like Don Jr., Newsmax is clutching at straws, albeit for different re reasons. Thanks for watching. Please stick around and check out another one of my videos. Say hello in the comments. Find my stand up on Spotify, stream by millions, and add me on Facebook and Instagram. It all helps. Be cool, be kind, take care.